Whether you are in a university or grad school, you take so many classes with so many different teachers. Have you ever wondered, is your teacher telling you the right thing? Is my teacher helping me to get to where I want it? Should I listen to my teacher? Short answer, no. Long answer, well, maybe, kind of, sometimes, it depends. Let me elaborate on that, but first, let's roll the intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. So in this video, I'm going to tell you three reasons why you might not want to listen to your teachers. And I will also give you five actionable, specific things you can do right now if you decided to not to listen to your teachers. So without further ado, let's... Wait, 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 hang on a second. Um, there's actually also a bonus content in the end, so stay for that. And without further ado, let's dive right in. So here are the three main reasons I can think of why you shouldn't listen to your teacher or at least why I did not listen to my teachers when I was in school. And I will also go deeper into why I think they give untruthful, unactionable and sometimes wrong feedback. To be fair, this is not a video for me to criticize or sh** on design teachers. Teacher sucks, don't ever listen to them. No, 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 that, that's not what I'm trying to say. This is meant to serve as a starting point to discuss, to get you thinking, asking questions, and understanding how you can learn more effectively and become a better designer at school with all the resources you have. To be fair, again, there are still many great teachers out there. I have personally had a few, which I will cover later in the video, but we may not have a good teacher every single time. So in that case, what do you do? What do you choose to do and not do? That's what this video is mainly about. So now let's talk about the first one. Don't listen to your teachers because they don't tell you the truth. If you think about it, you might realize a lot of the things that your teacher tell you might have been sugarcoated. This color is off. This color looks like shit. That they don't tell you that you're wrong. They will just go around and keep hinting that you might be wrong. In fact, you might never be wrong because being right or wrong is on a relative scale, which is a whole nother philosophical debate that I don't intend to get into here. At the same time to play the devil's advocate, I'm also going to give you the teacher's point of view so we will understand better why they choose or decide to do it that way. They don't tell you that you're wrong. One reason being, they don't want lawsuits. You can imagine if a teacher telling a student that the student is wrong, the student can go home and cry about it and talk to their parents, their mom, and their parents are going to sue the school and sue the teacher. Another reason could be the code of conduct. As we turn to the 21st century of truth, we can find a code of data regarding educators. They tend to need to be nice or at least appear to be nice. For the teachers to avoid any kind of potential future troubles, they will just stay out of this whole mess and instead give you something super high level, super vague. You're gonna figure this out, okay? So this is okay, this is nice, this is good. But uh, something is missing, keep exploring. They don't give you any direct negative feedback. But sometimes, some good teachers are pretty straightforward, which I like actually. One of my favorite teachers at Georgia Tech, she told me something like this, I'm gonna paraphrase it. What you have is nice, it's pretty good, but in order for you to get better, to become a better designer, you have to work so much, work so hard to get there. And then it just clicks. So that was one example. Your teacher can be really helpful, but you know, not all the time. But sometimes, in my opinion, I just need a wake up call. Just tell me that. This color is not right. This layout sucks. This combination, this interaction is shit. I can accept that this is wrong, this is crap, this is shit. It doesn't matter. What I need to know is what I did wrong and what I can do better. I need to be guided to the right path. And if that's the right path, please guide me. If you have a good designer friend, also happen to have a track record of being straightforward and honest, make them your best friend. It's gonna save you a ton of time and you will improve tremendously, drastically, exponentially. Number two, don't listen to your teachers because they tell you useless, vague, indirect, unactionable feedback. This I think is problematic in your early career. They will just tell you in a really high concept level, oh this works, and this doesn't, go explore more, yeah, go, go try more new ideas, uh, try that, look at that app, and then done. Even just tell me, look at that app, that specific interaction or that specific 
flow or that screen, or that layout, or that color use, and then you have to follow up on that. But they don't, they just say really high level, as if their favorite hobby is ballet. For example, I have some teachers that never give me any detailed feedback into what I should be doing to polish my design work. Maybe turn the radius a little bit more around it. I never got any of those. Unless it's just so obvious that your design is problematic when you should present on screen because your text is in such a light shade of gray, it's almost invisible. Then they might point it out. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you want to turn up the brush contrast, the, the, the darkness of the text so that it's more visible. But also think about it. This is so obvious, you're probably not gonna make those mistakes. And because you don't, that means that they're not gonna comment on that. And because they're not gonna comment on that, then you're not gonna hear any detailed feedback from your teachers. And this is where the problem is. They don't tell you all the details, all the polish, all the things that you need to know, or you need to execute. These things are very, very crucial. That level of polish in your portfolio project so that you can get an internship and a job. From a teacher's perspective, there are several reasons I can think of. One, they don't care or they don't care enough. They might not genuinely want to help, they just want to keep the payroll. And two, maybe again, it's the code of conduct. You cannot specifically tell your students what to do. And third, again, maybe lawsuits, you won't complain. Imagine you tell me to do A, B, C, and D, and I did A, B, C, and D, but I didn't get an internship. And then I'm gonna blame the teacher for telling me to do that. The teacher is lying to me, it is false advertisement. And then you go complain to the school, and over time you start to have a deteriorating relationship between you and the teacher and the school. From a student's perspective, this is actually really bad. So when I'm a freshman, how do I know I'm doing it correctly? How do I know if I'm using the right color, the right corner radius, the right button size, button height, the right layout, the right relationship between content? How do I know that? I don't think I do. In that case, I think it's more helpful that you just tell me what to do and I will do it. But if you just tell me to explore, so tr try more things, add more space, uh, how do I add more space? Where do I add more space? That is exactly what I don't know. Maybe just guide me step by step, then I can really connect the dots and understand. Oh, got it. It just clicks. Otherwise, I would just be so aimless and wasting so much time trying things that I don't even know why I'm trying those. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are a freshman or sophomore early in your design career, if you feel the same way in your design school. At the same time, I have to clarify, I'm not telling you to take all the feedback blindly. My approach is if I don't have any particular views or take on this subject matter, and if you tell me to do A, B, C, and D, and then okay, I'll just do A, B, C, and D, and think about, hmm, okay, why do I do A, B, C, and D, and rationalize the whole process, the, whole, the entire feedback, and gradually, slowly develop my own independent thinking, and iteratively, again, design thinking, update and upgrade my design sensibility, my taste and design judgment. Number three, don't listen to your teachers because they give you the wrong information. Wrong in the sense that they might have outdated information. I constantly compare what I know from Silicon Valley because I keep a close tie to it. I read a lot about it. I know what is going on, what their standard is, what they're looking for and compare that to what my teachers are telling me at school. And then I kind of see this disparity be between the two. And because they're teaching at school, maybe full-time or part-time and they have other side gigs to do, they don't actively working in the industry that I wanted to get into. So they might not know or hold the most updated information. They only know what they know and they can only teach you what they know. And that is really sad. Another example of wrong information is that they have not the right sensibility in design in particular. My teacher used to tell me, Okay, make this animation more interesting. Add some more bounciness to it. So they would just whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, it's more interesting in a way that it's not static. I personally don't think that's a good animation. It's not well polished. It's not aligned with the trend or with the industry, with the places that I want to apply to. Not to mention it doesn't match my personality or design aesthetic. And I don't want to get hired to do these kind of cheesy, tacky, template animations. In the end, I did not take any of that feedback because it's not helpful. It's not relevant to me. So are you convinced yet? 
not listen to your teachers? Well, in case you do, I have five actionable, or very specific things you can do. Number one, to make your teachers more helpful, you can ask them directly, more straightforward, look them into their eyes so that they cannot dodge you. For example, you can ask, what is wrong with this design? I specifically say what is wrong with this design so you acknowledge something is wrong already. So it's more likely they will respond to you. Or you can ask, what would you do if you were designing it? Or you can ask, what can I try? Do you think this is too dark? Do you think this color is too dark? Ask them something more specific. Or you can say, just give me some unfiltered feedback. What's your first impression? There's no right or wrong answer. What do you think about this design? Then you might make the best out of the teacher. Number two, ask your good designer friend for feedback. And because they're your friend and they're honest, they're straightforward with you, they will just tell you, point at the things that are wrong in your design. This looks like shit. This is ugly. This is crap. But you know, they're kind of joking, so you're not gonna sue them. You know, friends don't sue each other. But in the end, these kind of jokes or comments tend to get your attention. Okay, this is crap. Okay, let me find out why this is crap. Let me really think about it. And then you will learn along the way. Number three, do your own thing. Make your own choice. Go with your own design decisions. If you have a strong design direction and vision you want to execute, then just go with that. Number four, look at all those awards winning, well received professional design work and then compare those design to your design and see where the difference is. Again, one simple example is just go to apple.com, go to the iPhone section, look at the latest iOS design and see how they present their UI and look at how you present yours. Because essentially, if you are a UX design student, you will design apps, websites, while well, Apple, iOS design is software, right? Apple.com is a website, right? Compare the two, draw inspirations, draw similarities, maybe you even want to emulate a thing or two from there. And slowly over time, you're getting all those visual treatment and design aesthetic in your pocket, under your belt. And then you can use them later on in your future design. And five, I think is the most important, have independent thinking. I think this is really important to have as a designer. And actually, once you have it, you will kind of have a sense of which teacher you should listen to and why. Because when you are able to think independently, critically, you can really tell what feedback from which teacher makes sense, what's really useful, and what doesn't, what is useless, what is irrelevant. Combining independent thinking with the other four actionable things you can do, I think you'll be in a good shape. And there's actually a sixth thing you can do, which is the bonus content for this video. You can also ask me for feedback. I will give you some unfiltered, honest, straightforward, direct feedback to one of your projects if you do the two following things. One, smash the like button to help support me spending hours creating this video. Number two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send your project to my email, which you can find on my about page in my channel. Make sure you include your YouTube username so that I know you have left that comment. And then I will give you some honest feedback to your project, tell you what I think is wrong, what I think you can do, but one and one project only, please. Otherwise it would take too long. And I will also give you a shout out in my next video. The take home message for this video is that really think about what your teachers have told you and then develop a sense, a point of view to see if they are worth listening to. Maybe some are, maybe some are not. If you decide to listen to some of your teachers or none of them at all, well, I think you already have a list that could help you move forward, am I right? And that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead, destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you in the next video. Cheers.